off with a pledge. I'll continue. Let's start off with a pledge. And I think, Jim Crane, are you on? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, you or someone you've assigned this duty to, please let us in the pledge. Okay. I'll do that today. Um, hand over your heart and follow me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jim. As always, everybody mute unless you're called upon to speak. Okay, thank you. Thought for the day is Richard Thompson. Richard, you're up. Thank you very much. Uh, dear Lord, we have a special personal speaking relationship with you, and we ask for continued divine guidance as individuals and as a club. At this time, we ask for a little extra uh, love to go to Nancy. However, I wrote this before I saw how great she was, how great she looks, and uh, so I, I suppose that we shouldn't be gilding the lily, but uh, we send the love that we also sent to you, Nancy, and we're so glad to see you back. Yes, indeed. And Thank to you that so we much. say better, better days ahead. Amen. Amen. That's it, Richard? Yes, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next up would be our song leader for the day, Ed Galt. And Ed, lead us in uh, honoring the Army song. That's yeah, this is the official, official song of the U.S. Army. I know uh, Gordon served in the Army, and I think probably a few other Rotarians served in the Army. Uh, I served in the Navy. But let me give it a shot. I'm going to sing it, and anybody can join me. <clears throat> over a hill, over a dale, as we hit the dusty trail, as the caissons go rolling along. In and out, hear them shout, counter march and right about, as the caissons go rolling along. Then it's high, high, he in the field artillery. <coughs> Shout out your numbers loud and strong. Two, three. For wherever you go, you will always know that the caissons go rolling along. Thank you. Thank you. Very well done. Thank you. Okay, introductions. Are we have any uh, visiting Rotarians? Uh, I know we have some guests, but we do not have any visiting Rotarians. Any district people? I guess not. So therefore, uh, seen Rotaractor. Uh, well, Rotor actors, the guest of Rotarians. Yes, Rotor yes. So, do you want to introduce yourself, Kelly, and uh, anyone else? Kelly, why don't you go off, go off mute and introduce yourself? I know school's just starting, so we want to hear about you. Okay. Well, I'm Kelly Allen, and I am a senior at UCLA. I'm the current president of UCLA Rotor Act. and yeah, today's the first day of school, but I don't have class until six p.m. So. Um, everyone else is busy though, and I guess I can say that I'm an environmental studies and political science double major and global studies minor, and besides that, Rotaract is pretty much my primary thing at UCLA, so yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. We're so glad to see you here today. Anyone else? All right. Let's go on to the announcements for the day. And the first thing I want to bring up is the fellowship gathering, uh, the wine tasting, the Jim and Eleanor Myers home. It's going to be outdoors, so uh, we shouldn't have any problem with the um, pandemic, anything. I presume everyone's going to be vaccinated that will show up. Uh, they are in La Mesa. It was one street above San Vincente at obviously 2200 block. Um, it's very important at least for my planning purposes for this thing, that you respond to Diane's invitation. Uh, it's a no charge event, but we do ask to bring a small appetizer or something like that, or a bottle of wine. Um, we'll, we'll have plenty of wine. We have some donations of wine from the cellars of Bradford, White, O'Keefe, and Barron. And there'll be very nice wines, I'm sure, but we'll have backup 
anyway, so if you'd like to bring something your favorite, and we'll also have drinks, sodas, and water, et cetera, like that available. So, uh, but the important thing is to let me know at least how many are going to be attending. And so if you, I, I've had some no invites already, which I know about, and uh, Diane's received yeses from uh, just a little over 10 people, but we don't know how it stands now. But I need to let the Myers know so they can plan for setups and we purchase a sufficient uh, utensils and things like that. So let me know, email directly or to respond to Diane's invitation. The, uh, we have the visit from the district governor on October 7th, it'll be on Zoom. And we encourage you to have spices, uh, spouses rather, not spices, spouses and the Rotaracts are invited to come as well. Uh, we'll be having a meeting of the board and the uh, uh, prior to that, however, the regular meeting will start as usual at 1230 and uh, the district governor Giddy Jevid will speak uh, to the club. So that's on October 7th. The foundation celebration is called the ball gowns and bow ties. Steve Day, will you please give us an update on that uh, event? Okay, get me off mute here. And so you can let me share the screen here. Okay. Oh, is that me? That's not me. Is You're it? up. Okay. Share, share. Okay. Oh, all right. There you are. All right. Hi, everyone. Again, uh, here, here's the email that I sent at, uh, last week. This is the email that we received from the district. It's, it's full of good information regarding the upcoming foundation celebration on, on November uh, 6th. Uh, 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 Saturday evening at the Skirbel Cultural Center. Um, there was some confusion exactly where you would access raffle tickets or information regarding the dinner. Some thought it was attached to my email. In fact, I referenced you over to this particular email from the district. If you did not receive it, and some people seem not to have received or maybe it got stuck in spam or got inadvertently deleted, I forwarded it on to probably six or seven people and I can forward it on to anyone else. It also appears on the district website as well as the weekly District 5280 newsletter. So this information is available in various spots. The first part talks about if you're going to the event and as I heard as I joined today's Zoom, um, uh, Ben is think, uh, wants to go. Uh, so with Ben and his wife, along with uh, Diane and uh, Frank and Gordon and Watchery, uh, Marsha and I are not quite sure yet whether we can go, um, but others such as the Newmans and the Rogos, Barons, I think I'll have a conflict this year. But anyway, I think we can kind of comfortably, um, and this is directed towards Terry. Terry, I think we can reserve one table. I think we're okay for one table so far. I don't wanna make a commitment more than that. In past years, we've done two, three, even four tables. This year, I think we're okay for one. Um, I'll make that commitment. Uh, I think we'll, if, if need be, Marsh and I will make sure we'll change our schedule around if need be. So um, that would be, um, uh, if anyone else who is interested, maybe the Newmans, Mike, are you thinking about going? Yeah, but I think it's gonna be a problem. But I did wanna ask you as you address this. Sure. Uh, Gandhi will match the purchase of the raffle tickets. Right, thank you. And I, and I don't know how you can keep track of that if it goes through the district. Well, actually, uh, the mechanism we'll talk about in a second. It all comes back to me. Um, I mean, literally me. Uh, so far, uh, so to finish up the dinner tickets, first of all, please, uh, any, and, and, and anybody who wants to go, let me know immediately because we want to take advantage of the $150 per person rate rather than 175. Um, so please let me know. And if I don't hear anything, I'm gonna start reaching out to people. So uh, please let me know as soon as you can, if you are interested, we already know of, of the commitments so, um, so far. And I think that's gonna be a great event. So please let me know about dinner tickets. As hey, far you, as before, you, before you I'm move sorry. on, yes, of course you should reserve one table. I assume you'll take care of that and let me know what you need in terms of funding. Sure, I'll go ahead and I'll reach out to the, the powers that be for that, Terry. Great, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Uh, Steve, uh, how do we get a hold of the raffle tickets? Okay, that's what I'm about to say. Uh, or discuss. <laughs> so, I mean, again, this is the email that was sent out. The upper portion dealing with attending the, the event. Next is uh, safety protocols, COVID safety protocols surrounding 
the event if you happen to be going that evening. The third part is donations of silent and live auction items. If you're interested and maybe you have a vacation home or services or a pretty uh, crystal vase you wanna donate or whatever, um, please reach out to the district. The information here, Carmela Rack, she can uh, um, provide you the information. Also, there's a form right here, the auction form. Uh, again, the person who donates it gets Paul Harris uh, 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 recognition points, one half of, equal to one half of the donated item. And the one who purchases it at the Paul Harris, um, at, the, at the foundation celebration gets the other half of the point. So if you bought something for $500, you would get 250 and the person who donated it would get 250. And you use this form here. Um, the opportunity drawing tickets, the raffle tickets, opportunity drawing tickets, um, it pretty much follows last year's procedure. And what that is, is you, you can actually go here and they give you instructions. Just click on that. And what that is, is here's the instructions that you get. And it, it lays out exactly what you're to do. I guess the number one item I'll point out is designate your club foundation chair. Well, that's me. So I've been so designated. So, so far, about eight or nine members have already emailed me back or told me they're on the verge of mailing me back a check for um, either emailing me that they had purchased the tickets via their credit card. And down here on this form is all the instructions on how to do that. Same as last year, no different. Um, then what I ask you to do is go in and create um, the tickets. And how you create the tickets is you, you click on the, sh uh, on the, over here it says, uh, book of 12 tickets, or this one right here, these two actually take you to the same spot. And when you click on it, it's here. And all you do is you, you have this and it's, it's interactive and you start typing. So I'll type Steve Day, Westwood Village, blah, blah, blah. And you'll see it'll start autofilling all throughout the form. It's autofilled. So what you'll do here is you'll do this and then you print this out and you'll scan it in and email this to me along with, if you use the credit card, along with the, the rotary confirmation, contribution confirmation, and then you'll email that to me along with these tickets. And that's all you need to do. And when I get all these, I fill out the multiple recognition form and I send those off to the district. If you happen to say, no, I just, I'll, I don't, I don't want to do anything, Steve. I just want to mail you a check for $100 or $200 or $500. You can do that too. And my address I provided previously, but I'll do it again. Um, you can go that route too. All of it's laid out. And I can produce the tickets for you and I'll scan uh, an image or PDF over back to you to know that I, in fact, purchased the tickets for you. And I'll send that out. You know, being that I'm a investor, it's very easy for me to get over to the office and drop them off. So again, it's the same procedure as last year. Follow the instructions that are provided here and they'll walk you through. But if you just want to short circuit everything, just write a check to the Rotary Foundation and mail it to me and I'll take care of everything else for you. I'd rather you guys and gals go and fill out what's necessary and purchase the tickets online using credit card and creating your own raffle tickets. But if you want to make your lives easy, that's fine. I can easily do it myself get everything handled on a paperwork standpoint. So I hope that answered your question, Tom. You said, well, what about the raffle tickets? The raffle well, it does. It actually, uh, for those of us who are technically savvy, it's okay. But for a guy like Ron Leister, I'm not so sure he could understand all that. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll figure it out. I think uh, Ron's, a, Ron's pretty good. He's proven. He's, um, and I want to I I I I uh, call out one particular person. I always did it in past years and the person in the past years who would always be the first person to get me back the raffle tickets. And that's in the old school. We actually had a book of raffle tickets was, was Don Park. Don would be the first person every year who would get it to me. And I always would elevate Don in our meeting that thank you, Don. Well, now I have a new star and that is Chris Bradford all the way from Kansas City. Chris oh. did his own, he, he charged the tickets in using the instructions for a credit card. And he created his raffle tickets and emailed that to me. Thank you, Chris. And also thank you, everyone else has already done it. About six you know, about yeah. eight, eight people have already done it, which I think is great. Yeah. So. Is, is that Kansas City, Kansas or Missouri? Yeah. That's Missouri. 
Oh, okay. I thought it was Kansas. Sorry. Nope. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> anyway, any other questions? Any other questions, Rotarians? Yeah, where is Missouri? Uh, about right in the center of the country. We've got a full program today. Let's get over <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And, and, and one person who I want to buy, a, want, want to buy multiple books. And again, please consider multiple books. And we've done that in the past. And we've, we've, you know, we, have a, we have a threshold to get to. It's $6,800 this year. That's our threshold from last year. But especially Bill Rowan, he was our winner last year. So I know Bill's going to be very generous this year. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Steve. That's very thank informative. You. Okay. Thank you, guys. Now, if you want to stop screen sharing, I can get back oh, to my. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Oops. Uh oh. Did that, did that do it? Did that do it, Tom? Yeah. Uh, okay. There we go. I'm in now, I think. All right. Yeah. Um, we also have. Um, the Camp Pendleton donation is continuing through October 24th, which happens to be World Polio Day. But uh, if anybody has any donations of baby uh, goods or household items that you want to give to Camp Pendleton veterans, let us know. District 5280 is starting up a new mental health based Rotary Club. Mark, you may be interested in that, considering <laughs> your mental capacity. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but um, anyway, it's Zooming on September 30, if anybody's interested in that. Also, I want to make, uh, let's see, I want to make another announcement, and that's uh, the career day for Rotaract. Kelly Allen is on the screen today, and she talked a little bit about that. But anybody who's interested in participating, maybe as a career, et cetera, like that, especially if you're in the medical field or you're um, uh, any specialty item, uh, let, let uh, myself or Diane or someone know, because uh, we'll try to uh, get that lined up in the future. Let's see. Uh, I can't. Uh, I'm trying to go to the next slide here. Eh, feature of the day. Yeah, today we have a Bill Rowan wanted to communicate about a, a pilot and a deal. So we'd let him give him a few minutes here to uh, speak about the uh, uh, story he's got. Let's go ahead, Bill. Well, I do have a, a good story. Uh, we have a, a cousin. Is a, a, a pilot. He was an A 10 pilot in, in Desert Storm, but then started with American Airlines and now he's a senior pilot and uh, he flies a 777 and uh, usually does, uh, uh, he's on reserve. That's the way he likes to fly. And a trip came up to fly the Cabal and bring home refugees. These are um, refugees that had helped the U.S. while they were there. And uh, so off he goes. He, he flies to Frankfurt. They pick up food and uh, uh, beer for him. They go there. They fly into Cabal. They get uh, 200, 252 Afghan refugees. Among them, there's 139 children. And uh, as far as luggage, if uh, Tom and Margo and Bill and Sue went on a vacation for a week, they didn't have that much luggage that they put on the plane. So they really got on the plane with nothing. And uh, off they go back to, to Frankfurt and to, to get more food. And uh, all the the kids wanted when they asked them what they wanted to drink, they all said Coca-Cola. And that's, that's the only thing they wanted. And uh, they flew from there to Philadelphia. And that's where they, they, all, they got, all the people got off and they were uh, put through whatever process they have. And then they bust them to Fort Dix where they did further uh, vetting and then However, it went on to that. But the fact that this guy was so happy that he could help all these people, it's just like what we do, whether it's polio or, or other things that Rotary does. This was a great thing. And I thought the story was very good of, uh, of, of him doing this special trip to, to take care of these people that helped our service more. And that's the story. 
Okay, well, thank you, Bill. Appreciate that. Um, now, next up is uh, John O'Keefe. He's going to introduce our speaker today, Jennifer Noble of the Westwood Public Library. John, you're up. You're on mute, John. You're on mute. Okay, am I okay now? You're okay. Okay, I'm delighted to be introducing uh, Dr. Jennifer Noble, the senior librarian of our own, our very own public library, the Westwood Village Public Library, where she's been the senior librarian now for about three and a half years. Now, Jennifer came from Houston, Texas, and got to UCLA to go, got to, I'm sorry, that's a Freudian slip. She got to LA to go to college, but she didn't choose UCLA. She chose the other school in town, USC, and got her bachelor's degree there. Then she went back to Texas and got her master's at, uh, at University of Texas in Austin, and then back to LA again, still didn't discover uh, UCLA, got her PhD in organization change and leadership in the Department of Education at guess what, USC. Anyway, uh, she's gonna talk to us about a number of things about libraries and about our great library and what a great resource it is for us, including in a topic uh, like the joys of reading. So I'd like to ask Dr. Noble to take over now. Dr. Noble, you're on now, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I will me, start sharing my uh, screen. Do you want to okay. stop screen sharing with me, uh, Marsha? There you go. Okay. I got it. All right. Okay, perfect. So I didn't realize this until when the meeting started, I did choose red. So I apologize. You know, I do care about the Westwood community. They let me in here somehow, despite being a double Trojan. Um, I'm so excited to be here today. Uh, the last time I got to speak to y'all was, uh, that was in April of 2020. We were at the beginning of the pandemic. We didn't know what was happening and boy, howdy have we had a year and a half. I'm sorry, I am from Texas originally, so it, it comes out occasionally. Um, I'm here to speak about your Westwood Library, but first, um, I actually got an educational doctorate at USC. You know, I applied for the PhD program at UCLA, and they did not take me, so uh, I feel rejected a little bit by UCLA. Um, I've been a librarian for 12 years. Um, I spent a lot of time studying um, user experience design, studying diversity in libraries, and then I wrote my dissertation about how we can support um, a, a, a diverse staff and uh, create a great organization that um, serves all of our communities. Um, I recently finished the uh, doctorate in August, so that is why uh, I had to include this photo in there. So I am so, so happy to be here with you guys. Um, and most importantly, I wanted to take a moment to express like a real gratitude for the Rotary Club's continued support. Um, the Westwood Library knows how much you have done for this community and how much you have done for us. We appreciate your continued monetary support. We have some shared members of our Westwood Friends Board. Um, and Really, I, I know how much good you have done for the community and for um, the library uh, through all of those, all of your time and effort. So I really wanna take this time to say thank you. All right, so what's happened during the pandemic? You know, libraries were closed for uh, up until June of this past year of June, 2021. But we still were doing a lot of great things for the community and with the community. Um, I wanted to speak a little bit about what, what's been going on um, and how, how we've helped support the uh, Westwood in this time. Westwood Library was chosen as one of 21 branches to provide library to go um, 
uh, services for, for the entire Western region. We serve um, all of the communities for Pacific Palisades, Brentwood, Westwood, and Palms Rancho um, for a good over a year. We offered to go services downstairs in our parking garage. I've seen many of you guys picking up books um, and you would place books on hold and then come and get them in the parking garage. We also really took this opportunity to go through all of our collection, making sure that it's up to date, making sure that all the information is accurate within it um, and really making sure it looks as good as possible. Um, We've also been a huge participant in virtual programming. A lot of events have turned online, just like these Rotary Club meetings um, went to Zoom. A lot of library events went to Zoom as well. So we were really happy to participate in um, virtual programs about neighborhood science. Uh, we talked a lot about climate change. We talked a lot about environmental issues. Um, we were selected to work with EPA on um, a clean air program, and we have a lot more to come in store for that. We also spoke quite a bit about films um, and books. Our book clubs continued virtually. Um, and we are so happy that many of our book leaders and book participants um, decided to meet virtually. And I think in a couple of cases, participation grew because it was virtual. Um, we really thought about how we could serve our Farsi speaking community. Um, we had Farsi Word Fridays. Um, we helped create a uh, big video for Nauru's talking about how much we appreciated this immigrant community that we serve. Um, and we celebrated the 15th anniversary of the Westwood Library virtually, but um, we are we are so grateful that we are around for another another year. So we're on year 16 of serving this, uh, this neighborhood. So I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about our digital resources and kind of walk you through how you can uh, access a lot of these things from the website. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a tour um, we redesigned our website during, during the pandemic to try and make it more easy to access all of our digital resources. Um, up at the top, we have a lot of our scrolling. Um, these are our primary events. We're having a big Spanish language book festival September 24th through 25th, um, as well as working with our various partners and talking about um, all of our uh, new exhibits. For example, we have an exhibit about Joe Moore, a map maker of the American West. Here you can access things like e-cards. If you don't have a library card, you can register for an e-card really quickly. If you have children, Student Success is an excellent resource that is online tutoring that is available in the afternoons and on the weekends to help with homework. Um, we have book bundles to go, so you can request a whole bunch of books to be assembled for you and be ready to be picked up at any library of your choosing. Um, we have a huge number of eBooks and e-audio e books, um, movies and television and video that are available through the library, music, podcasts, uh, magazines and newspapers, including um, as a free subscription to the New York Times that you can access through your library, as well as our extensive research um, databases and our own uh, digital collections. I wanted to kind of show you a couple of these things and how they look. Um, first of all, uh, I use the New York Times almost daily. Um, I read it almost daily um, using our access and you just type in your library card number and type in your New York Times account and you get access to everything, including the food section, which is always a, a fan favorite when you're at home working <laughs> and trying to provide for your family. I wanted to speak a little bit about our resource Canopy. Canopy um, is a really wonderful um, vendor that we work with. 
you can install this on whatever streaming box that you have. So if you have an Apple TV or a Roku, there's a Canopy app. You would install it and log in with your library card number. And they have a huge number of movies, both entertainment, popular movies, as well as a, an outstanding collection of documentaries, world cinema, some series, and the uh, classic Hollywood cinema. Um, we do a monthly, a monthly um, film discussion that we partner with the West LA branch. And almost all of our film selections can be found on Canopy um, streams in very good quality, and it's all for free. By the way, if you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the chat. Feel free to chime in. If you like these resources, let me know. Um, always love to hear testimonials about anyone who has used I, I, uh, um, I was going to say, I've used Canopy myself a number of times, Doctor, and I find it very, very good. for really great kind of classic movies in that. So I've used it quite a bit. Fantastic. Thank you, John. Marsha, do you have? Do they send you the card digitally, like it through your email or through the mail, regular mail? So, so if you get an e-card, you can access all the e-resources immediately if you live in the city of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, so it's through an email. Um, oh. and, and then you can always come into the library and get a physical card. So mm -hmm. that allows you to check out books. Okay. So we can we can easily switch the accounts back and forth to each other. <clears throat> I wanted to briefly touch upon um, our e-media selection, such as ebooks. Um, I have been a big proponent of getting ebooks um, when you know the waits are long or you want something immediately and it's, it's midnight and you can't sleep. Um, this is a really wonderful resource. They have a lot of um, browsing categories, but you can also um, uh, do excellent, do like pretty extensive searches. Almost everything that we have um, in, in a print form, we have an ebook, um, and it is just a stellar resource. We're actually the number one user of ebooks in the entire country. We spend the most majority of our budget on e-media and um, our, the people of Los Angeles have really taken to this. So it's an extensive resource. If you ever have any questions or wanna set up a device, if you have a Kindle or an iPad, you can always make an appointment with me at the library and we'll ha be happy to do that for you to make sure that you can log on and, and show you how to do all of this. So I wanted to let you know about this. And then another thing that might be useful for you guys, uh, I know it's been useful for me as a manager, is LinkedIn Learning. This is uh, used to be lynda.com. Um, it is a powerful set of online classes, uh, over 3,000 courses, 150,000 videos on business, technical, and creative skills. Plus, um, it's offered in many different languages, including English, French, German, Japanese, Spanish, Mandarin, and Portuguese. I wanted to give you a little bit of an overview of this. So you pick the kinds of things that you're interested in and in your courses. It shows you how many, how, like who wrote this course, how many people have taken it. It has videos. You learn more about the instructors and you can see, you can even get certificates that are related to those courses. So if you're being asked to learn a new software program at work, um, this is a, an excellent resource for anyone who would be interested in that. All right. Any questions about any of those things? I did want to say one last thing. Doctor? Um, yes. And doctor, you talked about the New York Times earlier. Uh, do you have to subscribe to the New York Times, the, the, uh, the virtual edition, or can I just get it through your library card? Just get it through the library. It's all completely free. Well, that's good. Um, that's I have good. a question. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, do you go to the Los, to get the e-card, do you go online to the Los Angeles Public Library or the Westwood Village Library? Um, go to lapl.org. It's LAPL. a Los Angeles Public Library. And mm -hmm. then as you can see here, it says e-card registration. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So you'd, you'd go right there. Like One quick thing, we have an amazing amount of resources at the library, and I wanted to show you our photo collection. We have um, photos from the 1850s to present, um, documenting all aspects of life in Southern California. Um, we have a lot of these um, historic collections that have been donated to us. The most amazing is the Herald Examiner photo collection. That's around 27,000 scanned photographs. But we actually have 2.2 million photographs that are in the process of being digitized. So um, one thing I like to do is, you know, let's look for Westwood Village. Let's see if we can do a search or anything comes up. And you can see all sorts of um, images from Westwood Village throughout the years. So if you're doing a presentation or you're doing any kind of research, this is an excellent resource and tool. It tells you a lot about each photograph with the metadata and information. And um, you can always get it reproduced. Um, you can get it blown up and printed. We will do that for you. Um, there is a slight cost, but it is um, very, very reasonable but you can download it for free and use it for free with attribution. So I wanted to let you guys know about that. Jennifer, I had a question. Um, it seemed like every time we've had a visitor from the uh, library department, I always ask the same question. And it seems to me that in my day, of course, we used the library for research at college and things like that. I was over there all the time. But with the advent of the internet, et cetera, like that, have you seen a decline in the participation of library, you know, people, et cetera, and the visitors, et cetera, or has that stayed pretty steady or even grown because of the virtual or digital aspects of the library? So with our e-media, that's a great question, Tom. And with our e-media, it actually has grown. And um, we have a lot more users and a lot more people are coming in and using these resources. I think as we've gotten to know more about the internet and more about, um, our, our role in having to navigate these huge swaths of information, a lot of it is put behind um, paywalls. And the library spends a lot of money to make sure that these collections and these, these reliable resources are available to everyone. So I think a, a lot of times we have the traditional sense of the library with our um, actual books, which are which still circulate very well. People need physical materials. People need physical, even physical DVDs. We've increased the number of Criterion Collection DVDs, for example, that we have at the branch because they have information that's not readily available. But also we provide access to things that would cost and it helps level the playing field and provide some equity across communities for some people who may not be able to afford to pay for an article or afford to pay for, for a streaming service for their movies. Very good, thank you. Of course. I noticed you uh, have two, uh, several members of your uh, board. You have a board which uh, Sam Yerby and I think Mark Rogo's on it as well. Aren't yeah, you? Mark's on it. Of course, I'm so excited to have several members here. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to let you know our hours. We are open for our regular hours. We are open for our community. You can come in, you can browse, you can select materials um, in for uh, six days a week. Uh, Monday and Wednesday are our long days from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Tuesday and Thursdays, we're open from 12 to 8. And Fridays and Saturdays were open from 9.30 to 5.30. We're still offering a version of our library to go. For example, if you do not feel comfortable coming into the, into the branch, or if you are in a rush, we can pack your materials up, get them ready to go, and we'll take them down to your car in the garage. And of course, our computers are going to be available for one hour that will be expanded very soon. So if you miss learning about things at the library, they're still happening. 
both virtually and in person outdoors. We are waiting with bated breath in order to be able to do indoor events and have the community room being available for rentals. So um, I will keep everyone informed about that. I wanted to show you on our website, we actually have a listing of all the events and exhibits at the LA Public Library and it's classified into two different categories. We have in-person events up here and then online events. Um, online events have been really successful. We have very popular story times, very popular um, uh, events about culture and speaker series and book and authors. Course, course, uh, story time, is that online? That, uh, for little kids? Right now it's online for little kids because of the social distancing aspect. Okay. A lot, yeah, that's, you know. That's very good. And, and how do you log into that? Yeah, so um, I'll show you. If for everything that's online, there's going to be um, a, a, a page about it. So most of those story times are streaming live on the library's YouTube channel and their Facebook page. So you can if you search in the events listing and you see something you like, go down to the description and it'll take you to a link, link to how to get to it. So our YouTube channel has a lot of things coming up, including the, this uh, thing, uh, this talk today at four with Dr. Jose Hernandez, who is an astronaut. All right. We are having one in-person program um, that's outside. It's a craft program for all, fam all families. It's the third Wednesday of every month and we're trying to expand um, as soon as we can get permission to. So what's next? What are the projects that we are trying to work on? Um, we're trying to develop our collection. So we had an entire year where we didn't have regular book purchases. So we're missing a lot of 2020 books, a lot of early 2021 books. We did not have a book budget until July of this year. So we are trying to fill in those gaps in a lot of our materials that were well used over the pandemic are looking a little shabby and need to be replaced. We're also looking at updating our outdoor areas. Um, we, want to, we have a balcony space and then we have a patio space. We want to make sure that people can use the library in a socially distanced, safe way. So that includes bringing those outdoor areas as great places to read and to do work. Um, so that is, those are a couple projects that we're really excited about. But most importantly is the last one where we really want to make meaningful connections with our community partners. Um, you know, we've had a year and a, an, an, an plus of sheltering and, and being kind of insular. And now, you know, this is a great time to start connecting with people again and really um, support other organizations and the work that they do, um, whether it's by providing access to resources, whether it's helping out with their programs, whether it's um, hosting programs here at the library, um, we are open to it and open to outreach as well, so. So do you wanna get involved? We are recruiting um, virtual volunteers, including teen volunteers. So if you have a, a young one who needs um, uh, volunteer hours for their, their uh, high school, we, we are ready. You gotta be over the age of 13, but we can help have them. New members of the Friends of the West Mid Library, I know that they are doing a search for board members. So if you are interested, we would love to have some new faces, program presenters. And we are so excited about upcoming vaccination gu guidelines for in-person volunteers. So we're waiting for the city of Los Angeles to give us the go ahead to bring people back into, into the library so we can do book sales and um, other events such as our uh, our regular music events that we have on Sundays in the, in the library. So here's how you can stay in touch. I wanna add that, you know, we, we are regularly email people about our events at the Westwood Library um, through our newsletter. So you can always send an email to wwood at lapl.org and please stop by and visit me. So I'd love to answer questions 
Um, if anyone has anything that they would like to talk about, I am here. Jennifer, uh, I apologize, but part of the time you were talking, uh, and especially you talked about the New York Times and other uh, publications, I started a search for my library card. <laughs> <laughs> I got the library card 14 or 15 years ago, I guess, when the Westwood branch opened. And I turned it over and it says renew by phone. And that raised a question. Do I need to renew my library card? Your library card does actually expire after, uh, I think it's three years of no use. So if you have a library card, we can always get it, get it up to date and you just give us a call. And so that, that phone number specifically on the library card is um, for renewing books and renewing items. Um, but you can always give the branch a call. This is our phone number right here. Okay, I know how to reach you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you you for sure know how to reach me. Um, Jennifer, um, Jennifer, you mentioned uh, you could bring in a Kindle and, and basically take out a book by getting it put on your Kindle. Now, how about like a new book? I'm thinking in particular, for example, of this new book by Woodward and Costa called Peril. And I think it was just out on Tuesday. Two days ago. Could you get that book right away or how does that work? So just like regular books, we actually buy licenses for the digital books. So we, we buy a huge number of licenses for very popular books like that. Uh, Peril we know is going to be extremely popular. So you may have to wait a, a little bit of time for it, um, but it is available. Um, it's, it's just a waiting list. So it's a queue, just like if you were to wait for the brand new physical item. Um, but, but more than one person can get it at a time. In other words, absolutely. it's not like- We yeah, probably okay. buy like 150 copies of it digitally and about the same, about the same uh, for print media. Yeah, I get you. Thank you. Of course. Um, Jennifer, do you have, uh, when is the next book sale? They, they used to enjoy going to the book sales. Oh, you, you and I both would love to know when the next book sale is. Uh, we're, again, we are waiting on guidance from the city of Los Angeles to uh, have our in-person volunteers. And I know, I know our in-person volunteers, I know our volunteers are, can't wait we didn't, we weren't accepting donations throughout the pandemic, but people left them anyway. So we have thousands of books that need to be sorted and uh, put, 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 put ready for sale for book sales. So I don't know, hopefully, hopefully soon. Yeah. Yeah, um, for that question John O'Keefe asked about you having license agreements with various publishers that's hard to believe that they're going to curtail their retail sales to allow libraries uh, have Kindle or digital um, copies of their books. Is that, we pay a lot of money for those for those licenses. It's actually publishers make quite a bit more money out of their e-media licenses with libraries than they would out of books because you know books have the right of first sale. So once you sell a book, that's the only that's the only sale that it has. Um, and you can do whatever you want in perpetuity with that copy of that book. With digital licenses, it's actually done a lot of times by like number of times checked out. So if 25 people check out this book, then your digital rights leave. And so you have to repurchase. Um, and those, um, the copies of those books are often more expensive than a retail um, copy of the book. So it's actually quite a racket for publishers. Um, and that's something that um, has been a point of pushback, um, particularly with who controls um, the, the access to digital, digital media. <clears throat> I mean, as we know right now, there's a lot of discussion over the, the amount of money being made from streaming and digital services uh, with our Hollywood neighbors um, talking about a potential strike. Um, so it's, certainly a point of contention. But yeah, actually publishers do make quite a bit of money from this. Jennifer, when you take out a hard copy, 
um, how long can you keep it? And how do they police taking out a hard copy book uh, when I think uh, any uh, fines have been eliminated? Yeah. We did eliminate all of our fines. Um, so, but eliminating fines doesn't mean that you're not still responsible for returning your books. Uh, every book you have three weeks, except if it's a hot off the press book, which is a browsing collection, that's one week. It's very specific, small collection, but most, most items are three weeks. Um, and it automatically renews twice if no one else wants that item. So if someone else wants that same book and there are no other copies, then you'll have to return it. But you can have it up to nine weeks if no one else wants it. Um, so we did get rid of fines at the very beginning of the pandemic. We were supposed to have an April 1st uh, marketing campaign about, about getting rid of all our fines in 2020, but it was overshadowed by bigger, more important global things. Um, this is actually the way that most large library systems are going. Um, there's a huge uh, push towards making sure that people are able to use the library and that there's more equity. For example, if, if someone it, uh, who is, has on a fixed income or a limited amount of income checks out a book and then they lose it, that could be devastating and that they may not be able to use the library ever again because um, they cannot afford to pay for that. Um, as for, we do ask that you return the books on time. Um, if if you, it has been 21 days past the due date of the book and you still have it, we consider the book lost and you won't be allowed to check anything else out until you return that book. Jennifer, do you have uh, a book review uh, portion on the, on the website and the bestsellers listed? So make my life might be easier to look. We do have um, some uh, book reviews on the website. Let's go to the catalog. Um, we have a whole section called LAPL Reads. Um, so our librarians are reading and it kind of does it according to uh, adults and kids and teens and audiovisual. Um, so we do talk about this quite a bit. Um, and then we do have regular blog updates, which have lists of books. Um, as for bestsellers listed on our library, we don't. Um, we just make those resources available, such as the New York Times book review through our, through our access there. But you can always call the library. You can always email me. I'll like gladly get you, get you lists and um, that is part of my job is to do a lot of reader's advisory. Um, so I, I do care a lot about what people are reading and I'd love to give you some recommendations. So do you have, I have, I have a quick question have email address, please. What was that? Can you put your email address in the chat. Yeah, my, my email, you can always email Westwood, um, which is uh, this right here. It's uh, W-W-O-O-D at LAPL.org. Okay. And then my email address, I'll put my, my page on here, is J-N-O-B-L-E at LAPL.org. I've I got a, quick, a couple quick questions. What, yeah. um, what, what are some of your biggest challenges you see over the next year or so and then has, has a homeless population coming in and you know taking the computers or smelling or just looking at stuff they shouldn't be looking at? Has that been an issue for you guys at, at, at this location? So all um, libraries are open to everyone and that's a huge um, aspect of our service. Um, we really care about, um, we have a rules of conduct um, so there are certain ways that people are expected to behave. If they do not behave in those ways, then we do ask people to leave and we can do suspensions of library privileges based on behavior. Um, we work with, um, we work with, uh, we have a security guard and we work with LAPD to, and neighborhood prosecutors and um, various other entities with a city attorney to make sure that those rules are followed. Um, however, we, we want to make sure that we do have access to everyone. Um, 
In terms of challenges for the next year, I, I think that people are frustrated and upset about this ongoing pandemic. Um, we, we follow county guidelines in terms of making sure that people are masked. And um, so really enforcing those kinds of rules have, it's been difficult because people are upset, just like any other retail establishment. Um, I know that you hear stories about grocery stores and restaurants all the time. Um, and we have seen a huge decrease in foot traffic um, because people are rightfully, you know, concerned about spending too much time in public. We're really happy that UCLA is back in session. Um, we are seeing quite a few UCLA students come and use the library. So that's been really wonderful. It does, we do have a strong Wi-Fi and we do have free printing for up to 10 prints per day. So that's been useful for, for people. But um, I, I do think getting people back in, into the habit of coming to this as a place um, uh, is going to be a challenge, especially when we're still limited on the kinds of in-person programming offerings that we're offered. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. Um, Jennifer, um, uh, did you comment about this? Maybe I missed it. How about donating books? Well, we're still not accepting donations yet. As soon as we get in-person volunteers, we would love to accept all the donations that you can give us. So preferably, preferably in very in good condition, but I know that our, uh, our library book sale volunteers are eager to get back, but we don't have enough staff to go through and process book donations until we get our volunteers back. I see, yeah. Can I, uh, can I talk about another kind of donating? I'll put on my fundraising hat now. I think with this great resource we have in Westwood and many of us who live nearby and could use our and do use our library, it's a good place. It's a good uh, place to put your some donation dollars in every year. It's a deductible, uh, deductible donation, of course. And I, I, uh, my wife and I do donate to the Westwood Village Public Library. I think it's a very good idea. I, I, again, I, I said it earlier and I wanna say it again, we are so appreciative of all the support. Um, I know our, our board for the Friends of the Westwood Library are, are appreciative of that, of all the support. And I know that there are many of y'all in this audience. So thank you. Thank you for like supporting this presentation. Yeah. Along those lines, Jennifer, an appreciation for your time today, which we really enjoyed as you can see that uh, we are making donation in your honor to the, would you believe this? The Westwood Public Library <laughs> being cost for this year. And so at the end of the year, you'll be getting a check uh, substantial in honor of our speakers. And you're one of them. We should certainly appreciate your time today and uh, effort in putting this presentation together. It's very good, very good. Thank you. I am so happy to be here. Anytime, any question, I'm easy to access. So I uh, really appreciate, again, why are, you, why, are you so, why are you so pleasant becoming from USC, though? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, that, I agree with you. I agree with you, Tom. Why I, such, such I'm a, infiltrating UCLA, oh, though. <laughs> I, You know, they have a school of information at UCLA, and I, I was the first to volunteer to mentor students there, you know. I, uh, I see a, a lot of good in, for both of these institutions in, in the city. So I, I've, I'm very happy that I get to be over here at Westwood. Oh, that's, I'm just kidding, of course. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much. And um, if you wanna stop screen sharing, I think we'll get back to the, yeah, there we go. Um, I'd like to ask, we're gonna draw this to a conclusion. However, I'd like to ask all board members to stay online here We've extended the times. So we have a quick board meeting. We have to get a couple things approved. And so the rest of you, and, and we appreciate your viewing today, but uh, the board members, well, you know who you are. Please stay on touch. Thank you. Meeting. Uh, Tom, Tom uh, I didn't yeah. see a fine for me for my